Hi, everybody, and welcome into the show. Well, on the week, the Clemson Tigers again with two games against teams from the northern reaches of the ACC. A Tuesday night visit to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse to meet up with the Orange. And then a Saturday visit from the Pitt Panthers. As Clemson tries to begin making a move toward the upper half of the conference as we get close to the end of January. Now, when they went up to face the Hall of Famer Jim Beheim and Syracuse, they knew they would see a whole lot of zone defense throughout the contest, and that was the case. Let's recap the action of the Tigers and the Orange. Here's head coach Brad Brownell with Don Munson. Well, thanks, Pete. All right, coach, so two games uh, this weekend we need to talk about. A road game. Uh, we went up to the Carrier Dome and played at Syracuse, an offensive game up there, and then returned home and got uh, Pitt back in, in Little John. Syracuse game was, was one of those, we knew that the offense, I think, for both teams was going to be there. Unfortunately, the defense let you down a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit of a different game that games this week. Offensive-minded Syracuse with perimeter firepower, Bayheim shooting threes, Gerard shooting threes, obviously zone defense for 40 minutes uh, that you have to face. And then Pitt, a big, strong, physical, kind of a defensive-minded team. Uh, Hughley inside, one of the best, maybe the best post player in our league in terms of interior scoring, kind of a smash mouth posted up so it was certainly two different types of games for sure. Yeah, Hughley is a load no doubt to inside for the Pitt Panthers. Alright, let's get to highlights first of all for Syracuse and it's brought to us by the good friends at the South Carolina Education Lottery. Since 2002, more than 147,000 lottery funded scholarships and grants have been awarded to Clemson University students. So uh, no student body at Syracuse so a little bit uh, the crowd wasn't necessarily what it was but you come out, you're going to score the first couple of buckets, and P.J. Hall is going to end up having a big game for you. Yeah, he played really well. I thought our guys did a really good job of getting him the ball in, in good position, deep position. Uh, and then he showed his skill level throughout the game, making a variety of shots. And, and the other suspect, usual suspect, was, was David Collins. He's, you see the open layup there off of the steal. He's going to play big for you. There's the zone, but I thought you all did a really good job of working your way around the zone. Yeah, our offensive game plan was good. Execution really Played, guys played well. I thought we did a lot of great things. Got the ball to the high post, moved P.J. around, got it to him in post position, made a few threes. Offensive efficiency was, was excellent in this game. Yeah, P.J. is going to end up with 19 points in the game for you. And that guy off the bench, Chase Hunter, was big for you. Yeah, another really good game for Chase. Came in and made three threes. I thought he had some really good post feeds into P.J. and into the high post. Got a little bit of penetration. Uh, our bench really helped us. We didn't get off to a great start again, and the bench came in especially Chase and, and Sparkus. He stick there, right there, a little stick back by, uh, by Chase, or by uh, Hunter Tyson. Then you go back outside, and, and again, Chase, his game for me in the last four or five uh, games have really been picking up for you. Yeah, his confidence has grown. That's a big part of it with Chase. He's a talented guy. He's been injured throughout his career a little bit, just has lost a little bit of confidence at times, but starting to come back. The great thing I thought first half where you got down double digits, but you fought your way back. Nas Bohan and a little turnaround is going to get you back uh, to within two, and your kids just wouldn't die in the first half. Yeah, we you know we played through the beginning of the game. They got some some baskets early. Here it is again. Chase making a nice pull up. Our bench really kept us in the game in the first half. We we struggled a bit. Here's Nick who didn't start coming off the bench, and he played well. Uh, really got in uh, a space drive there because of transition and, and made a nice runner in the lane. Shefflin, a little turnaround for him, and Ian's starting to get more and more play in time for you. He is, and he's, we, we really are confident in his offensive ability. I think he's a guy that can pass and, and make some shots in the high post. We've got to continue to improve his defense if he's going to help us. And that was probably as good to see as anything, as Nick Honor knocking down a, an outside three, and then Alamir is going to follow it up, and, and all of a sudden now you've grabbed the lead. Yeah, our first lead in the game, really, where we looked like we might actually gain control. Defensively, we just had a hard time guarding them. Their size at the perimeter, they played over top of us a little bit. Uh, you're probably going to see some of that in the second half highlights. Uh, but I, again, great, great offensive game plan by our guys. Another deep three by Nick. We got the ball inside of the high post. David kicked it out. I just was really pleased with how our guys performed in a, in a quick prep on offense uh, to play the right way. Good look by Bohannon down low to, to, to P.J. Hall, a double-double for him and 19 points to go along with 11 rebounds. And then, uh, you know, Alamir penetrates. Good things happen when you can penetrate the zone. Yeah, good job by Nas. Got himself into the gutter area. We call it behind the basket. Use the rim to, to help him finish right there so they, he could uh, attack the shot blocker. 
I mean, there's one of the things about Ian that I really like from the freshman passing ability. Really good. That was a timeout play that we ran against the zone, found uh, Al for a three. And then off the block, Hall's just not going to stay with it, and he comes up with his own steal and a dunk. Yeah, hanging in there. I thought our guys made some tough plays on offense to just kind of keep ourselves in the game. Again, we were having trouble guarding them. Bayheim and Gerard were, were unbelievable in terms of their shooting in the game. Uh, but we showed good offensive patience. Here's David driving it in the lane. You've got to have a good mix to your game if you're going to uh, score against Syracuse. You've got to make a few threes, but you also got to drive it. Another shot fake pull up. David with a solid game. Yeah, you're going to see throughout this that, you know, really Syracuse isn't separating that much. Unfortunately, teams are just trading baskets. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah, we, we, we found ways to score, but we just haven't been able to get stops in this game. Here's a great high-low pass in our little partner passing drills that we do pre-practice against zone that, that worked well. Another baseline, I mean, we just, we're just hanging in there. We're five, six points behind, but when we need to get a stop, we can't. This is really a big basket. I think they're going to show Buddy, yeah, Buddy making one over top of David. That was kind of when we were beginning to, to make a little bit of run, and we just couldn't quite get it done in, in the game at Syracuse. All right, so Syracuse at home wins it over our Clemson Tigers, 91-78. Coming up, he's a sophomore who's become a star for the Clemson team. We hear from P.J. Hall after this. Inside Clemson Basketball with Brad Brownell is brought to you by Carolina Ford. Built for the Carolinas. Built Ford Proud. Visit your Carolina Ford dealer today. Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Whether you're in the stands or in your living room, nothing goes better with basketball than Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Welcome back to the show. P.J. Hall is a freshman last season, was someone who learned quite a bit while waiting and watching behind Amir Sims. Plus, he knew that he had to get better about staying out of foul trouble. He certainly improved in that latter area and certainly shows what a good student he was a season ago. More on a guy who's become the Tigers star with Tigers on the inside. Presented by Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax, Tiger fans, with Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm PJ Hall. I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, it was a lot of change over the offseason, obviously for my body, uh, but then really going through what I went through last year, having to learn from Amir and uh, kind of take that backseat role, I learned a lot from him, learned how to try to lead my team and learned a lot of uh, how to have a better mentality on the court and more, more aggressive offensively and defensively. We, it was two days in the weight room. Uh, I would be on the court working out, getting conditioning in. Um, I was cutting fat, putting on muscle. Uh, a lot of times, I put on weight, so a lot of times I was force feeding food. It was, it was definitely not fun. It, obviously, in the ACC, there's a lot more competition uh, where I'm at right now. And so I had to learn how to play this game, learn the pace of play, learn where I can get certain bucks. Because I mean, in high school, if, if I get the ball into the basket, I could really do whatever I wanted. And so here, I got to make sure I'm getting the right move, I'm reading the defense, see what I can do. If I have to put my back on somebody, if I can go straight up, a pump fake and get in the lane, try to get fouled. Learning the game and then uh, just trying to get a feel for it is what really changed and helped me along along this time from last year. I just kind of had to get used to it. Whenever I was in high school, we, we were, were watching film. We are watching film on other teams, making sure we're on point with that. We're, we're scouting their teams and everything. We had morning workouts, PES, which was just PES sports, which is a basketball class essentially. But we took it serious, and then whenever I got here, it really wasn't that much of a transition for the type of culture because I was already used to I me mean, waking up early, coming in for a workout, coming back for another working out, workout, practice, come back and shoot. You know, I mean, really, it's, it's day in and day out what you're doing. Yeah. P.J. Hall has really elevated his game to the extent that he certainly will be up for all ACC consideration. Now, there's a new member of the coaching staff this season, and Kareem Richardson comes to the Tigers with, among other stops in his past, as the head coach at Missouri, Kansas City just a few years ago. More on him as we go inside the program. Kareem Richardson, uh, assistant coach. I'm from Rantoul, Illinois. I played two years at East Carolina, and, um, and then I, I finished at the University of Evansville after transferring from East Carolina. So when Evansville was recruiting me, uh, uh, Coach Brownell was a graduate assistant at the time, and so he had to come pick me up and drive me around, drive me places, and take me to the airport and whatnot. And so uh, who would have thought, you know, 30 plus years later, we would be working together. So right after I graduated, uh, I went to University of Indianapolis uh, for two years as a graduate assistant uh, under Royce Waltman. Coach Brownell played uh, for Coach Waltman at DePaul University. So between Coach Bender and and uh, Coach Brownell, uh, just you know, people that, that, that I know and obviously could trust. 
just thought it would be a, an ideal situation. And, and I'd be silly to say to be at a, at a university as, as uh, known as uh, Clemson and, and being in the ACC uh, didn't play a factor. I'd be kidding. Coming up, the Saturday battle between the Tigers and Pitt Panthers. But first, here's what's ahead on the Clemson schedule. Well, welcome back. All right, so next up is going to be uh, the Pitt Panthers. Get them back in Little John Coliseum. And like you said in the opening of the show, this is a big physical basketball team. Yeah, big at every position. Burton and Oda Cali on the perimeter are both 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guards. And then you've got Hughley inside. Really tough team in terms of physicality to guard. We're a little bit smaller. We've had some trouble with Syracuse. So really a game of us being able to be physical defensively to have a chance to win. No doubt, not about it. Pit hungry team coming into a little John. Let's get to highlights. It's brought to us by the Carolina Ford dealers, built for the Carolinas, built for proud. Visit your Carolina Ford dealer today. Hi, right, coach. So you had a great crowd that showed up in Little John for uh, the game against the uh, Pitt Panthers. It's going to end up being a, a big win for you. And you're going to come out right away and kind of establish momentum offensively for your ball club. Yeah, I thought P.J. was good early in the game, and, and that was important. He and Hughley had a great battle. Uh, this is P.J. knocking down a big three to, to get us off to the really good start. Yeah, he had not hit a three in a while. We're going to see he'll hit a, a second three in the ball game a little bit later on as well. He gave Chase Hunter a start, and he responded big time. He played really well. Couldn't be more proud of a young man who's, who's just kind of hung in there. And, he did a lot of really good things, not just making a couple baskets. I know he had double-figure points, but those assists, great pass to Al, his buddy. Kind of nice to see those two playing together again. Yeah, no doubt about it. David Collins hits a couple of threes for you as well in the game, and he was just solid one more time for you. Yeah, he's really having a nice year. He does a lot of things for us. Excellent rebounder. Uh, gets fouled a lot, gets into the paint and scores. Uh, really good senior year for him. Yeah, we take a look at second look at this mid-range jumper by Chase Hunter, a lost art in the college game, but not for that young man. Yeah, that's what he likes to do. He's really good mid-range. He's an improved three-point shooter, uh, gets out on the break, does a lot of different things. He's really our third point guard, so uh, just really proud of the way he played. And there's another young man, Nas Mohan, his birthday. So he's played very well on his birthday. Here's great defense by David. Uh, thought we had a really good plan with doubling Hughley a bunch of different ways, and then David with a fantastic hit a head pass to Chase. Yeah, no doubt. We'll take one more look at it. You created 20 turnovers against the Pitt Panthers. Yeah, we know, everybody knows that we didn't guard very well at Syracuse, had a lot of had a lot of issues, and uh, I thought that's something we worked on really hard for the last two days, and, you know, our guys really did an outstanding job of, of defending in this game. And a little extra effort there turns into an easy two for, for P.J. Hall. Absolutely, and, and we, we got to see a lot of zone. Uh, they really played us a little more zone than we thought. We obviously... Did a nice job against Syracuse in the zone offense. It carried over in this game. Uh, guys getting the ball to the high post, making plays. There's some tremendous passing. And here we just kind of hang with it. They block a shot. And now we're getting to the paint. And those two guys, the two grad transfers, playing very well together. <laughs> it's like they have played the, together their basically their entire lives. But like I said, ball movement. I thought the ball movement tonight was just excellent. You know, we've, we've done a really good job. We had 19 assists in the game against Pitt. I think we had 22 maybe against uh, Syracuse. So our passing uh, has really improved. Our guys are sharing the ball. And that's when we're hard to deal with. You come out, they cut it to six. All right, but a, a Hunter Tyson three is going to re-up the lead. And this is the point, you know, we kind of get things going. Here's Hall's second three-pointer for you. Again, to, to up it back up to, to a 10-point lead. Uh, and you're going to get to this 12, 13 point lead, and it's going to kind of stick there for a while. It concerned me a little bit, but you, your guys just wouldn't go away. No, we did a great job. We just hung in there defensively and did such a nice job defensively, of making it hard for them that eventually we got hot. And uh, you're seeing us throw in some threes. Uh, Hunter and, and, and uh, TJ really got us going early. This is a great play by David Collins. One more pass. That's super basketball right there. Uh, Nick to Chase with a big three. And, uh, you know, Hunter, uh, again, uh, with the 13 points, he didn't have any turnovers for you in the ball game as well. And I know that's what you're looking for yeah, from a player. Excellent. Uh, you know, David did a nice job. There he is driving into the paint again. Finds Al. This is a big three. This is kind of when the game got pulled away. And you know, we got to enjoy the last five or six minutes. Now, is it just me or has Al made a little adjustment on his shot? Because it looks like a little more air underneath the ball. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's, you know, we don't talk to him a lot about it. He's a confident guy. He's a guy that's made shots most of his career. 
Um, he gets a lot of shots in every day after practice. A lot, most of our guys stay after for 30 minutes and just shoot with the coaches. Uh, here's nice to see Alex finally make one. He had a little bit of a tough night tonight, uh, but good to see him knock one in late. 75-48 the final, Clemson victorious over Pitt. All right, time for us to go into our coaches' chalkboard segment where we're going to feature a little fast break action, but not only that, but defense uh, yeah, also as well and how you can, you know, use your defense to get your offense going. All right, so let's, let's get to uh, the, the play we got coming up. First and foremost, it's just going to be uh, what turns into a steal for you. Double team, first and foremost, on the guy penetrating. Yeah, it's a little bit of a high ball screen action where we had to, you know, deal with that. Obviously, you get, a, you get the ball knocked loose and then you pitch it ahead to Hunter Tyson on a two-on-one. It's really David just seeing the guy ahead of him for a good break. Really important here is just, we call this cowboy pick and roll D where we're kind of just retreating and then behind on the weak side, we have Hunter Tyson chipping and David Collins rotating down in front of the big. David gets uh, the steal and now he's just playing two on one. You can see that the defender is not, doesn't have his butt to the baseline, doesn't really see it. So now that's an easy play to throw it ahead. Hunter uses a rim and finishes on a nice layup. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things where you, if you're going to come up with a steal, you got to have somebody that's going to get out on the break. And it's a good job by, by Hunter hustling down court. Yeah, try to create separation. Get behind the defense is the key. And, and Hunter almost does that here. Uh, the defender for Syracuse doesn't do a good job of, again, getting his butt to the baseline and sprinting back as quickly as he needs to. David with a good heads up play. Nice pass for a, a layup. When we come back, we look back on the career of a Tiger who was a ferocious rebounder and had a fine career beyond Clemson as well. It's just ahead. Back in the hands of Collins, penetrates, dumps it right side, honor, extra pass to Hunter, chases, three-pointer is good. Welcome back. As we remember Tiger legends this season, one of them came to the program somewhat raw offensively, but was a great rebounder from the start, and that continued all the way through his career and on to a long run in the NBA. We remember Tiger Legends with Tim Beret, presented by Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Whether you're in the stands or in your living room, nothing goes better with basketball than Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. This week, Dale Davis. Now, Tree Rollins is the all-time leading rebounder in Clemson history, but I just remember Dale Davis as being the most ferocious rebounder that I ever saw play for Clemson. He was that way from the get-go as a freshman. Now, he really struggled offensively. I remember his first couple of games down a little John Coliseum, he had trouble making layups. Part of the reason he had a lot of rebounds is he would get his own offensive rebound. But boy, he, he was such a hard worker in every aspect of the game, and that was especially his post moves and his scoring down low. But one of the constants was his ability to play defense and uh, to rebound. Now, I remember a game his sophomore year against North Carolina, uh, a game that he had 21 rebounds in. There was a stage of that game, there must have been five minutes during that game, that he got every rebound at both ends of the court. And I vividly remember Billy Packer broadcasting that game. And after he got like his sixth consecutive rebound of the game, we both naturally just looked down at each other and said, can you believe this guy? He's just getting every rebound in the game. And the Tigers went on to, uh, to upset North Carolina in that game. He really had his first great game as a freshman against Duke when the Tigers at the end of the season, this was the 87-88 season, uh, upset a nationally ranked Duke team. And Dale had 23 points and 17 rebounds in that game. I remember Coach K making some real positive comments about his game and his just relentless effort that he showed in that game. One of the other things, of course, we remember about Dale is he graduated on time with his class and was inducted into the Clemson Ring of Honor in 2000. And it went on to be a first round draft pick, played many years in the NBA with the Indiana Pacers and uh, continues to be a great representative of the, uh, of the program. Still comes back to some games. He lives in nearby Atlanta. It's always good to see him. I got to see him earlier this year, did an interview with him and uh, he looks like he can still play today. Dale Davis became a favorite for fans in places like Indianapolis and Portland and many other stops around the NBA, part of a great career after his great run as a Clemson Tiger on, among other things, that lone ACC regular season championship squad in 1990. Well, coming up, just one game on the week for Clemson. That'll be a Tuesday night visit 
to Coach K and Cameron Indoor Stadium against the Duke Blue Devils. Tigers then get some time to rest before the grind of the second half of the ACC schedule sets in. Next week, same time, we'll look back at that game between Clemson and Duke and have much more for you on Clemson basketball. For now, for head coach Brad Brownell and Don Munson, Pete Yannity, thanks for joining us and so long. Inside Clemson basketball has been brought to you by Lending Tree. Shop and compare loans, credit cards, insurance, and more. Lending Tree. Founders Federal Credit Union. Relax, Tiger fans, with Founders Federal Credit Union. This has been a production of Clemson Athletic Properties.